This time we're gonna find out how to cool the gasoline under the hood of your car. Why would you care? Well, we've found out twice on Engine Masters that hot gasoline is bad. The first time we were actually trying to figure out why cooler coolant temperatures make more power on an engine, we were also testing ice cubes on the intake manifold, and what we actually found out is that it was cool gasoline making the power improvement, not the icing of the intake runners. And so we came back to a second episode, and it was all like super trick. We had an infrared camera, all sorts of colors and neatness, and we once again proved that hot gas Gasoline ends up killing horsepower. And then, of course, there's vapor lock. What is that? It's an old school thing, but basically, the fuel boils in the system and the gases come out of it, and the mechanical fuel pump can't pump it. Next thing you know, you're not moving any fuel, you're dead at the side of the road. And for all of those reasons, it also doesn't like boost. So, you want cooler gasoline. And I was thinking to myself, how can you actually make that happen? Now, let me walk over into the dyno cell once we get this all hooked up, and I'm gonna show you exactly how we're gonna test all this stuff and what those three different methods of fuel cooling actually are. Here's how this whole thing is going to work. Remember, our idea is to mimic the conditions of a fuel system in the car as closely as we can. So step number one to that is this right here, which is a nitrous bottle heater. It's filled with water, it's got a heating element in it, and we've got about 10 feet of fuel line running through it. So we're gonna be able to heat the water there. We're gonna measure the temperature of that water inside the hose at the fuel itself with this thermocouple right here. On the first test, I'm gonna block off the airflow through this cooler so that we can get a good baseline. But the Fuel's gonna go through there and come to this thermocouple, which will later on in the episode show us the effectiveness of the coolers. And of course, we've got the dyno telling us the horsepower, but we also have this air hat on top of the carburetor. Now let's talk about the cooling. First of all, we have this transmission cooler here with an integral electric fan. And I just thought, man, this would be an awesome way to cool fuel if it actually works, because you don't need to change ice or anything like that. And so we're gonna be testing that. And your typical old fuel cooler that does take ice. This is a can that is filled with coils in there. So it's the same concept on how we're heating the fuel with coils inside the water, but this time we're gonna have ice in there that should be cooling the fuel as it goes through there. We'll find out the effectiveness of that. The last thing that we're gonna do is gonna be probably impractical for a in-car application, but I wanna take a CO2 bottle, discharge it directly at the carburetor bowls, freeze them if I possibly can, and then run out of the room and make a pull. So so that's how our test is gonna run. Hot fuel with this blocked off, then we're gonna go to the trans cooler, then we're gonna go to the ice cube cooler, and finally we're going to the CO2. quest to find out how to cool the gasoline in your car to make more power, we've got our baseline numbers. This is our 514 Ford with just warm fuel. We made 647 pound-feet of torque at 4,500 RPM, and at 6,000 RPM, the horsepower was 640. Let's have a look just at the fuel temp to see what we were able to do. Unfortunately, it's not as hot as I really wanted to get it. Here are our temperatures. The green is in the tank. I showed you that sensor that was right down there by the water. And then the purple is at the carburetor. And what's really okay. interesting is to see how they go like this. Why does the temperature at the carburetor get hotter? I know why. Fuel flow. Because we've got uh, this much hose between the tank and the carburetor that's cooling off with the wind on the dyno, and it has to consume all of that before it gets to the hot water that it's sipping out of the tank. When I start to run and it's been idling previously, it's gonna be that temperature down there that's 100, and then as it has some fuel flow out of the tank, then it's gonna rise. So obviously in the car, we know that it's gonna hit get hotter. at least coolant temperature, at yeah. least. We're having a difficult time demonstrating what really, how horrible under the hood temperatures really are. Yeah, we don't have a way to get the fuel that hot. But we can cool it off, so the next thing we're gonna do is run in there and connect that little transmission cooler with the integral fan. We're gonna see how much it cools the fuel and how much it makes power. So we had the fuel running through the heated tank, and now all we're doing is connecting it to the transmission cooler, so we'll have a fan to help cool the fuel. Test number two, we've got the transmission cooler with the fan in line. Now 
we have our test that has that little radiator in line flowing fuel with the air blowing through it from the electric fan. The beginning temperature of the fuel in the hose from the water tank that we're still using was really similar to what we saw, 118 degrees, just like it was before. And you can see that that's pretty flat, but look at this. Boom! You didn't even see that line down there, did you? 74 degrees at the carburetor after cooling it with that little doohickey. I thought it would help a little, but I had no idea we can knock 45 degrees of temperature out of the thing. I got to give you credit because you kind of invented that. I didn't well, see that I don't know about that. before. I mean, other people must have done it, but yeah, Probably. it was like this transmission cooler, or oil cooler, it cools fluids, right? Yeah. I was a little scared of running fuel with a potential pinhole leak with an electric fan right there. Worst fuel leaks everywhere. Yeah, for sure. I'm definitely guilty of that. And so it's a cool thing. And not just for drag racing, think what that would do for like a road race guy. Well, see, there's just no runs, no drips, no errors. It's not like a cool can where you have to be concerned about either replenishing it or dripping or getting a starting line everywhere. and yeah. all of that. It's just the flip of a switch and watch the temperature drop. There's no downside to this no, whatsoever. None whatsoever. Yeah, the question is, does it actually make horsepower to have the colder fuel? Here are the power numbers just from our cool fuel test. We made 651.6 pound-feet of torque at 4,400 RPM, and up at 6,000, we saw 644.3 horsepower. How much better is that than with warm fuel? Ta-da! Wow. Red lines are warm, black lines are cool, and you can see it distinctly makes more power with colder fuel. All right, Brulee has got the temperatures of the coolant and the oil up where they need to be. And then you see Troy in here, he's chilling off that radiator. I hope he got the memo to also spray the carburetor. The boiling point of CO2 is minus 78 Fahrenheit. So we're getting that as cold as we possibly can. The challenge now is he's got to get the oil and water right to the right place. 58 degree fuel right now, 60. We've done all of this testing with fuel temperature. Our final one was with CO2 going through the radiator on that thing, chilling it as much as we possibly could. Here's the temperature results there. You can see that the fuel coming out of our heat tank was about the same down here. Oddly enough, it got colder when we hit it with the CO2, which means the coldness is running down the hose to the once sensor right out of the heat tank. Once the warm fuel starts to see the cool fuel, maybe there's some transfer of temperature. Yeah. No, there has to be, yeah. Yep, well, clearly there is, 10 degrees. And down here, without the CO2, our little radiator was giving us 74 degrees, and with the CO2, it heated all the way up to 65 degrees. So a 10 degree change, probably not practical in a car to carry like a 15 pound CO2 bottle to make that happen, but let's have a yeah. look at the power. The power with our super chilled gasoline was 654 pound-feet of torque and 650 horsepower, but how does that compare to before the CO2? Pretty good. Yeah. You know, interestingly, this time, you talked about the divergence before. Convergence. And this and now it's diverging. Or, yeah, you talked about the converge, now it's diverge. Yeah. Meaning when we say it converges, that means that there's a bigger change down low and a smaller one up top. When it diverges, there's a, almost no change here and a bigger change there. So who knows? I think that you'll see more difference than this in the car. Because I think you'll have 180 degree fuel and I think your cooler will bring it down to like 140 or 120 and make a way bigger difference in power yeah, than what we're seeing here. Diminishing returns as you're getting colder and colder and colder, yeah. you wouldn't expect to make more big gains in power. It's just gonna be a little less of a gain, less of a gain, it'll I be logical. So. From my point of view is it's just the simplicity of the switch and the fan and the cooler done yes. and it knocks 50 degrees out of it or whatever. That's and, the second conclusion is yeah. surprisingly enough, yeah. the little radiator that he thinks I invented for this is actually really, really neat.